begin. Uh, Gabnet Live, G-A-B-N-E-T-L-I-V-E. And uh, you know what we're doing? We just kicked in uh, the TV as well, because this is TV night. So if you call, you'll be on the TV. And there's, uh, there's Jim Browning, and there's Rob Alfano. Uh, let's see here. Uh, there's Josh Wheeler. Uh, who else have we got here? Okay, is that it for now? Okay. Uh, hello, uh, uh, Jim. Hi, Alex. How are you? You're in your car. Yeah, I'm just pulling into buttfuck. <laughs> just, just pulling into bus buttfuck? Yeah, I'm just pulling into buttfuck. Going to get a bit of dinner. Uh, 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 going to get that uh, that uh, buttfuck special? That's right. <laughs> What are you gonna What are you gonna have for dinner? Uh, they got a thing in the city here called sushi. I'm gonna try that. Oh, you're gonna try that. Oh, you, <laughs> you going for the exotic food tonight? Are you? That's right. I'm going to eat at Buttfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh man! Oh. Uh, you'll Who's never the comedian that be... used to say, "I want to have a nice big butt steak"? Yeah. Yeah. How many people uh, I do I have on here now? I have a, one, uh, two, sponsor. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have ten people already. Oh, oh right. Right. yeah. We have a we have a full house tonight. Let me see here. There's Patrick and there's Phil and of course uh, from Buttfuck Canada. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm surprised you don't up there have a town named Buttfuck because. Uh, uh, you have these other weirdly named uh, places. Yeah, there's some that are unique. Like, for instance, you're on the highway right now, right? Yeah. Well, actually, I'm just I'm I just got off the highway. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and what town are you in now? I'm in Kamloops. Oh, you're in Camel Hump, uh, Camel Toe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're in uh, Kamloops, uh, which yep. was which was named after you said an Indian tribe. Uh, it's an Indian word, Kamlupa. Uh huh. And what does that mean? Go fuck yourself, white man. No, it means butt fuck. Oh, I see. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No, it's it's an Indian. I'm not sure what it means. You, you, yeah, I think it has something to do with. It's kind of a deserty area, so it, it has something to do. It, it's it's native. It's native. So now a yeah. lot of people are going to say, "Gee, uh, how can you possibly be in Kamloops and do your show tonight?" <laughs> Uh, it's the internet. Do you remember the old days in radio when a guy used to go on before he would start a show like yours and go, the following transcribed? <laughs> <laughs> they used to say that, transcribed. They used to call a recording of a radio show a transcription. Wow. That's what I should do. I should change the name of this program to the Alex Bennett Transcription. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> You know, nobody will understand what the hell I'm talking about. But, yeah. You know. So anyway, uh, well, I oh, guess I better let you go. Otherwise, you'll, you'll yeah, get killed. Yeah, I'm uh, butt fuck. Um, I'm wearing my Rimmel Grove shirt. Yeah, he's wearing his Rimmel Grove shirt tonight. Well, funnily enough, at, just as you pull into town, there's a big picture of Patrick on the highway <laughs> wearing that shirt. <laughs> Awesome. You know what we so, you know what we should all do uh, is just show up one day at your front door, <laughs> you know, and just surprise you. Anyway, I, I'm trying to get. I I think it would be a great idea if yeah. we got everybody together yeah. uh, and did one of those uh, houseboat cruises, which is not too far from Revelstoke, and and we just we we bring our laptops and do the yeah. show on the houseboat, and yeah. everybody just hangs out. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, yeah. Let's well, maybe this plan, Wednesday let's we that. can do that. Can we? Can, uh, yeah, maybe we can. You could get up there, couldn't you, Patrick? Uh, sure. And we could get Miranda because she could then wheel you for real. Well, I mean, Miranda <laughs> helped me through a lot of the uh, difficult mm -hmm. terrain and everything else. So. And Phil, you could come up, and uh, we and we could rent a house, that houseboat, and take a little little cruise on the uh, on the Buttfuck River. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Phil would get stopped at the border. No guns. And no guns? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, have a nice night, Jim. I'll let you go. Okay. okay I'll bye -bye. be back to listening. Bye. Okay, bye. Uh, Tony was uh, was calling in, and I couldn't put him on because that would have uh, disrupted the whole thing. Uh, but uh, if he wants to call now, we can put him on. 
Hello, Mark Beaumont. Hello, Mark uh, Thorner. So How you doing? I, I wasn't hey. on the last few nights, but I was listening, so well, I'm keeping I, up with you guys. The only thing that bothers me about all of this is then tonight I have the Mark problem once again, where I say, Mark, what do you think of blah, 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 and one of the other Mark answers. So I'm going to have to... B, Mark B and Mark T. Well, I could say Mark in Florida, but they're both Mark in Florida. Yeah, how about that? I was thinking of changing my Skype uh, name and redoing it as something else, like Beaumont or, or something, but, you just know, you to make put, it easier. You can put anything you want to in there. Any relation to Hugh? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. He's a TV actor, yep. Yep, Hugh Beaumont. Well, he's dead now, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Long gone. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, it, we don't have a picture on you right now. Rob, so you might want to stop it and start it again. Yeah, I've done that a couple of times. I noticed. Um, yeah. Hello, like, hello to Tony. Hello, Tony. Hey, good. Good. I, I say good morning. Good. Good night. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't take your call earlier because you would have frozen everybody up. Oh, I'm sorry about that. No, it's not your fault. I wasn't really listening because I was, I was just playing with the dog, and then I just came over, so I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, you were playing with the dog. Well, actually, I, yeah, I was just washing up, so I had to throw a treat to get her out of the bathroom. What what treat do you throw? Your mother? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I take the Purina One dog food that I feed her, and I put it like in a little in a little like bowl. So when I take her out and she does anything good, I give her a dry piece, like her water. So I usually, when I go to the bathroom, she runs in the bathroom and sits there because she doesn't want to be by herself. So listen, I got to go to the bathroom. So everybody I take the raise your hands. How many, how, I close it then. Everybody raise your hands. How many would care about this? <laughs> no. Okay. It looks, it dog, looks, it dog looks, can go to the bathroom it, with you. It looks like, I mean, throw it out and I close into the, the bathroom. bathroom. looks like Mount Rushmore. Uh, Max is calling. Hello, Max. How are you? Good evening, Max. Hello. You, you're there. Okay. Uh, can you yes. people see Max? Or not you, yet. Uh, uh, not uh, yet. Okay. No, not yet. Yeah. Just as still. Yeah. Uh, just uh, we just have your still. So uh, let's see. Here. Seven, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, wait a minute. If Josh wants to call in, yeah, I'm gonna have a problem here. Drop off. I'll call out. What? No, I can go. It's I've been on here. I'll call back later. You'll call yeah. back later, Dan. Yeah, I'll call. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll listen in. Well, wait a minute. Josh hasn't called in yet, so wait till Josh calls. Oh. And okay. again, Tony, we have your. We just lost Tony. Oh, Tony's. I don't. I don't want to. Tony oh, probably, well. no. Tony probably didn't say goodbye. He just decided to leave yeah. after I suggested he feed his dog his mother. <laughs> Josh. Josh was on earlier, just two minutes yeah. ago. Where'd he go? Right. Yeah, what happened to you, Josh? He no, he. Yeah. I think he he had trouble with his signal. Yeah. I hope that doesn't happen tomorrow night. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, if it does. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> I, I heard uh, that they're going to call it the Real American Broadcast Network. Really? <laughs> Instead of the Great. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> call it what you will. <laughs> yes. But uh, anyway, uh, let me see here. So, um, uh, uh, how are you doing, Phil? You're back at home again? Thank God. I, I didn't get in until 1.30 this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, the airlines, I don't know what it was here. It was Thursday night. You would think that you know it wasn't a, wasn't a big deal, but every plane was late. Uh, they rerouted me through another city, and it turns out that this plane stopped at three other cities in Texas. Uh, it, it, well, it was, it, it was so, miserable. It, somebody once said it was so nice that the... Uh, uh, pilot wanted to show his plane off to his friends. <laughs> yeah, I think so. It was kind of like the Concordia <laughs> just before it sank. I, I can't remember. I, I, usually I try to take nonstop flights. Why didn't you take a nonstop flight? I did, but what happened was uh, coming back, the only flight I could get at the time that I needed stopped in Kansas City. But uh, because of the delay in Dallas, I would have had to stay overnight in Kansas City. So I went up to the girl, and she thought I was nice. I don't know. I don't understand. I, I must have not put my foot in my mouth. And I said, well, how about routing me through another city? So she says, well, there aren't any. I said, well, what about Phoenix? And she says, oh, yeah, there's one, one seat available for Phoenix. But what she didn't tell me was that the Phoenix flight stopped at San Antonio, El Paso, and then Phoenix from it's like Dallas. A bus. <laughs> it's like a bus. Mm. Oh, yeah, it was, it was like a local. 
And and then when I got the Phoenix, how, how much the, milk? How much milk was delivered? <laughs> yeah, the the Oakland plane was late and it didn't take off till ten ten at night. So I was stuck there for about three hours. Uh, you know, uh, and, and the only reason that the only reason that I that I flew Southwest this time instead of United or one of the others is that uh, on the United flight they did the only seat available for one leg uh, was a center seat. I didn't want that. So uh, and if you wanted to I, put the, to use two legs. That would right, exactly. More. So I, I booked Southwest because it's general seating, and you can pay twelve bucks a flight or twelve dollars each way, and uh, they guarantee you the first boarding. So, and since I travel, what if everybody so though pays twelve dollars, then everybody gets the first boarding? You would think that, but uh, most people sit there, uh, you know, one second before the twenty-four hour uh, period, and and try to get the seat. Uh, I, I found it's much easier just to pay the twelve bucks. Is that the airline where where the guy who collects your ticket is the guy flying the plane? Uh, no, he's the guy sweeping it out, though. Yeah, it's like People Express. Remember them? Yeah, sure. I do. Sure. Matter of fact, I, I once I once flew uh, People uh, People's Express uh, when they first opened up in Oakland. Yeah. Uh, they I, they had a flight ninety nine dollars to Belgium. Wow. And I had just gotten back from Europe maybe a month before, and I said, well, I can't pass this up. I'm going to Belgium. <laughs> so we got on the flight, got some Chinese food because they didn't have uh, food. You had yeah. to bring your own. <laughs> and uh, went was to Belgium first, for a week. That was the first airline that I remember that you had to bring your own food. Yeah. What, uh, now we have a problem here. Who is, yeah. the, who is this person that was trying to call me? And uh, oh, it's Raymond Vouch, but he, um, hmm, uh, well, he he hung up. Oh, wait a minute, I, he he should, huh? Let me let me add him. I to know the call. The, I know this person. Do you know this person? Yeah, yeah. There it is. Wait a minute. Did anybody come up? No. no. There's something coming up. It says live, uh, semi uh, colon and then R V O S C E or R V O S. I want to connect. Yeah, but I don't see it on my. Uh, I have a feeling they're calling the wrong thing because I don't see anything here. It could be. Yeah, I mean, they. Uh, I, I mean, see. In... Wait, wait a minute. There's Raymond no. Vouch again. I add him. Are they calling the group thing? Or are you? Wait a minute. Add to call. Okay, I don't think there, he's ever called before. Go. He wouldn't know to call the group. Now we've it's... got Raymond in there, but he's he's not uh, he's not connecting. <laughs> And I was saying all these nice things about Skype earlier this evening. Is the TV on tonight? Huh? The, the TV, TV on? TV's on yeah. tonight, yeah. Mm. Yeah. But Raymond's oh, just, uh, you know, hello, Raymond, yeah, can like... you hear us? No. Yeah, oh, she's, Raymond. she's having a tough time. It's it's going to be a female voice you, you would hear, not a male voice. Oh, really? Raymond yeah. is, a, is a female? Well, it's that per. I, it's, Long story. Huh? It's, it's what? Long story. <laughs> what do you mean it's a long story? What, what well, it's not Raymond. It's transgender. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. <laughs> Somebody's but, sound is very weird tonight, too. Do you guys hear that? Yeah, there's some sort of uh, 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 like a mar- sa- background sound. Like Martian or something. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, what do we I have? just turned on my air conditioner a bit ago. Did it just start? What? The sound. No, no it's okay. not your air conditioner, no. But, you know, I don't understand how people can fly for a living, you know, back and forth, different cities, uh, spending all that time in the airport. It, it's it's, uh, I'll, I'll it's tell miserable. You, I'll tell you something. I, uh, my, my wife works with uh, one guy who I got to know. Uh, okay, here's Raymond again. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I'll hang up. No, don't hang Why? up. Don't Nobody hang needs up. to hang up. You, nobody needs it's to hang up. It's only nine people on. Sure? Oh, it'll, it'll be a full house once. Right here. Okay. Add to call. All right. And they're having, they're having trouble. Comes up. She might have trouble. They're, they're having trouble getting... Huh. I, I have no mm-hmm. idea what this is about. I, 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 I give up, Raymond. Mm. Uh, quit trying. Sorry. <laughs> well, message me uh, huh? or something. Yeah, message him. He'll tell you how to do it. Uh, yeah. You should ask permission, I think, is what you should do. And then, then it'll work just fine. 
Uh, oh, you on Skype? Yeah, yeah. But but it, it, it see it keeps doing that until you oh. want to kill it. Uh, I yeah. had to call. Oh, sorry. She'll. Uh... There we go. We're trying again. It's not there. Okay. Yeah. Well, All right. Okay. So sorry. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, Here there we go. she comes. Right. Yeah. What really? So, Hello. What's happening? Raymond. Hello. Hi. That's Raymond. Yeah, see, that's oh, not Raymond. Minutes. Everybody, <laughs> look. everybody. Hey, there oh, there she is. is. Hey, yeah, up? made it. We finally yeah. got you on. Hey, how are you? Well, you nice can't. To see you. Oh, hold on a second. <laughs> you. you can't possibly be Raymond. Raymond's yeah. got a soprano. I'm not Raymond. Huh? I'm not Raymond. So, what is your name? My name's Rebecca. <laughs> Rebecca, and right. you you yeah. tend to know Dan. I know Dan very well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, how do you know him? In a in a canoe way or uh, uh, in a uh, we went to get a fest today. You went to what? <laughs> get a fest today. What? And that's a whole other question. <laughs> Wait, is that, that part of the fest? Okay. Back me 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 back up. Um, <laughs> how do you how do you first of all how do you know Dan and why? <laughs> <laughs> And if you know him, why are you calling? <laughs> you know. well, one, he told me to look to listen to you guys and see what you guys have to say. Yeah. So, I am. I think you guys are very funny. Two, I used to work with him. Uh huh. At um, a store, he actually trained me on a computer system, and we've been friends ever since. Okay. All right. All right. And and <laughs> and and now, what is this thing you said you did today, Dan? We went to Geta Fest. Now you have to know about Geta. What Geta is? It's a Cincinnati um, native food, uh, and what it is, it's it's like you know a lot of cities will have like their poor people kind of food. They Cincinnati was known for uh, pork producing long ago, and um, mm -hmm. oh, we lost, we lose all our cameras. Yeah. Uh, oh well. You can only have nine, and, and including Alex. Wait a minute. There are just too brought... many people on this call for a group video. It says up. Wait a minute. Up, upgrade. What? This is <laughs> Tony's on. <laughs> we have one, two, three, no. four, five, six, seven, Looks eight, nine. Looks like we lost nine. Max. What? Looks like we lost Max. It looks like we lost Max. Okay. Oh okay. well. Sorry about that. Okay. I don't want to. Anyway, get it. What get it is is it's a. Um, By the way, this is going to look great tonight on the uh, on the on the yeah, video. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Start and stop absolutely. your camera again, Phil. Anyway, go All ahead. Right. What, get a fest. And get we, a and, fest. And we lost. Uh, did we lose her? No, we still. No, have, I'm still here. You're still there. We just don't have your picture. Your okay. Off. You might turn. turn camera you might turn again, your camera on up. and off again. Enough of this, Dan. <laughs> what is get a fest? Get a fest is. A festival that honors uh, Geta, which yeah. is a kind of a sausage-like thing, and it's made with sausage and oats, and it's really good. And I can't really describe it completely. I know Rebecca makes it too. Maybe she can okay, uh, okay. fill us Don't in get more. Don't involved what it in this. Is. <laughs> well, so Geta, what? Let's Geta. You make it. Tony yeah. and Patrick. Right. Tony and Patrick, both of you, turn your cameras on and off again, will you? Okay. Okay. Uh, now, you make Geta, do you? Yes, I do. Uh, 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 Rebecca? Yes. It, Rebecca's Geta. You, you can't take any more people. You got 10. Okay, thank you. You do the. You, you be the guy who does the addition around here. Okay? <laughs> All right. All right. So, Rebecca, how do you make Geta? I use oats and sausage and some water and some seasoning and put it in my crock pot and cook it all day. And it comes into yeah. like this form uh, that you can fry uh, up. Why do you put oats in it? Is that what makes it different? It's for the it, horses. <laughs> <laughs> no, it keeps it together so when you go to form it into a patty, it's like a sausage patty. Ooh. But yeah, once you it form it, it's like it's if you just Wikipedia. dip the meat, it won't stay together. Is. So the oats oh. hold it together. How do you spell Geta? G-E-T-T-A? No. G-O-E-T-T-A. That's that, very that's important. That's Gata. G that's Gata. It's Geta. No, it's Geta. No, I'm sorry. It's Gata. Anywhere it's else. It's G-O-Y-U-M. <laughs> yes, I know why I went. I got to spend time with him. 
G U Y O M. And, and it was started by a woman who said, "Gotta have a big sausage." <laughs> yeah, that. Oh, by the way, Max wrote me and just said, uh, "No, no, nothing, no problem. Uh, have a good time." Thank you, Max. I appreciate it. Uh, it was just oh, something went nice a little wrong here. Yeah. Uh, uh, was it invented by a woman who said, "Gotta have a sausage"? <laughs> Looks good. No, it was invented by a guy in, I think it was 1946 no, it was to long. help stretch his food budget. No, it was yeah. longer than that. It was like a hundred. It's like a hundred years old. Yeah, maybe it's, I don't know. And is it really sausage? Sausage? And do you eat it on a bun or do you just eat it as a sausage? I, I think you, you eat it out of a bag. You can eat it. <laughs> you can eat it as a sausage. You can eat it on Ooh. bun. Today I ate it with jambalaya. Did you really? Yeah. Don't get the crab cake now. <laughs> yeah, all the pictures that I see here shows it with breakfast foods. Oh, oh yeah. really? Yeah, mm -hmm. with eggs, with uh, waffles. Mm -hmm. It's really Looks good. good. Looks it's good. Awesome. Yeah, it's, it's it's awesome. And and uh, get a fest. You can get it on pizza. You can get it on anything, really. Any pizza, come on. Well, when we all meet up in when we all when we all meet up in Revelstoke, you'll have to bring us some, Dan. <laughs> oh, I will absolutely. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, uh, it, oh, by the way, uh, Tony, is mom all right? The dog didn't eat the eat, eat mom. You're gonna laugh if I tell you this. I'm going to laugh. Yeah. See, I wonder when people <laughs> say that ahead of telling something. This is gonna make you laugh. <laughs> Which means you're, you're, it, you're, it's incumbent on me to laugh or I will hurt his feelings. Well, you know what she called me for? That's right. The Coco was on her bed sleeping. So what I had to do is I had to go in there, pick her up, and put her into that cage where I have the uh, bed for her. Yeah. She, 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 she's she's, your she's jumping on the beds now. What? She, she's jumping on the beds. She's jumping on the beds. She's got to run to the house. Tell your mother to stop that. Yeah, yeah. Put your mother in the cage and let the dog sleep oh, on the bed. Coco, stay in the bed. I feel like I'm yeah. on the zoo over here. Your father's still li is still uh, living, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's watching the old movies in the other room. Yeah. Now, did you see this? No, I didn't see it. Can't get him any new movies? And he's stuck in the 40s and 50s. Well, so, so is our friend Shecky. I know. I mean, him and him would be like uh, Delsner on the run. No, I mean, uh, Shecky, in fact, this weekend is up in Rome, New York, going to a big film festival to watch I know, I, rare, I rare old films. Yeah. Would you ever go to that, Alex? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It sounds It sounds good. I well, got to get to one. Uh, uh, Shecky and I went out to California. It also happened to get married at the time, but the most oh, important true. thing wasn't getting married. It was we went out there for the uh, showing of Napoleon. Which is the what is it seven and a half hour film by Abel Gantz, a silent film uh, done with a live symphony orchestra, and oh. it was the most amazing movie experience I've ever had in my life. And I went That's there with, with Shecky, and then my girlfriend, who then was became my wife before we saw the movie. I remember that. I still couldn't believe it. Everybody, you went out there in secrecy. Remember? We went out there to see this movie. Yes, remember you were talking about But it. to see a silent orchestra. film with a symphony-sized orchestra, and it was that done was by, nice. this, by this guy who does all these movies, all these silent films, orchestrates them. Okay. Uh, it was just, I mean, amazing. And at the end of the film, the last uh, half hour of the film, Abel Gans came out with this thing, and I can't remember what he called it, but the screen opens up into three panels, like the old Cinerama was. This was the precursor to it. And he had like three projectors putting three different images on the screen at one time. And then sometimes they would all be a complete continuous image, so you have this wide screen. This was all from a silent film from like 1928. And it, it just, after it was over, you just, you were so enthralled. And you had just been watching a nine and eight and a, a seven and a half hour silent film. Yep, we I, had a we did have a dinner break. We did have the dinner break. I remember you saying that. Yeah. See, I saw that when it was done at um, Radio City with Coppola's. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a horrible score, though. It's, you were saying that. The God it, it, awful still score. was alive. I mean, just to see that, it, especially that last reel. Was you, just, you you wonder if you can survive seven and a half hours of a silent film. And it is so. That film is so easy to watch. I mean, it just goes right by. So you, you know? never feel like you're being like 
They get dragged at all then. No, not at all. Did you? I, uh, did you, Mark, when you saw it? I, I was. It, it, it was such an amazing look at Napoleon. And it, it only it only takes him up to his first big battle. Yeah, I mean, I mean, but it was just an amazing piece of cinema, when the fact that it existed. And again, you know, they talk about uh, well, there's like a four or five hour version of Intolerance that's lost. Yeah. You know, and well, here is this epic that you know. Yeah. The ages that no, was Alex. yeah ahead of its time. Well, this is amazing. The, the guy who uh, who did the music was Carl Davis, and he he was conducting the orchestra. And the problem they had in in getting this done uh, was that they had to um, get the permission of Coppola to do it because Zeotrope had bought up the rights to the film, and Coppola doesn't want it shown without his father's music. And really? compared to Coppola's, his father's music sounds like crap compared to Carl oh. Davis's score. Because Carl Davis has been doing this professionally for years, scoring silent films. Doing it very well, too. Oh, yeah, I mean, amazing. Just amazing. Uh, if you go see a silent film that Carl Davis has scored, <laughs> all of a sudden you'll say, silent movies, I miss these? Because some of the greatest films you'll ever see were silent films. The Big Parade, for instance, one of the greatest war movies ever made. Um, and, uh, and, and they won't bore you either. Our Hospitality by Buster Keaton, one of the funniest comedies ever created. Uh, the General. The General, of course. And he, Carl Davis did a score for The General, too. So it's pretty amazing. Pretty so the amazing. music was probably so integral in Alex back then for the Well, no, what happened was in the old days used to... Here's what happened. You know why sound was invented? Sound was, it was, uh, here's why sound was invented. The organ broke? Well, no, but here's... The <laughs> that, 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 that's, that's funny. He, he, <laughs> you're, you, you're a little close. You're a little close to the answer, actually. Um, what happened was, when you did, saw a silent film in New York City, you would see it with a full-size symphony orchestra playing in the pit to the music on the screen. So it was a combination. It was a wedding of the music and the, and the visual. Okay. Uh, then when it got out to uh, Queens, maybe it was a quartet, <laughs> you know. And by the time you got to Buttfuck Canada, it, it was a piano or an organ. You always make fun of the Canadians. So the and, reason, and, and in the Bronx, it was a transistor radio. No, so, <laughs> no you, you, you won with the last joke. You should know when to walk away. Take some, uh, <laughs> take some clues from George Costanza. Anyway, uh, so. Uh, they invented sound because they wanted to be able to have the music that was in the big city in buttfuck. They never thought that it would ever be used for dialogue. That isn't why it was invented. And then what happened is when they were making the jazz singer, um, uh, Al Jolson starts talking to his mother and says, you ain't heard nothing yet, or gets up on stage and says, you ain't heard nothing yet. And they went, you know something? We could also use this for people to talk. Oh my I mean, that was not the reason they invented sound. They were trying to invent sound so they could have a musical soundtrack. And that was it. So. What a concept. <laughs> well, you know, I, Alex, I've told before about the Vitaphone project. Yeah. And what they're doing now, because now they're finding the Vitaphone discs and they can now match it up to the footage. Yeah, it, well, let's explain that for a second. Warner Brothers... <laughs> Who, who bought Vitaphone and used it as their sound system for the jazz singer? Oh, the all the uh, all the uh, sound was uh, was on big discs that played yeah. along with the film and were synchronized with the projector. It was hell. Uh, and and Fox er, years earlier had a system that had the sound on film, but nobody was thinking about that. They they were all thinking records. But uh, Vitaphone itself, at least the original Vitaphone with the discs and everything, only lasted about three or four years before side-by-side -side sound on film uh, won out. Well, that was interesting for everybody, I guess, huh? <laughs> I like that song. <laughs> you like that kind of song. I like the movie. Uh, I like learning stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see here. What, what uh, 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 David? What's been happening in the news since we? What happened? What happened to uh, Josh? 
fix Josh is having computer, computer Skype yeah. problems. Oh, yeah. well, let's hope he doesn't have them tomorrow night. Well, no, no, this is uh, Skype version problems. Oh, really? So yeah, like what we all had. Oh, so he's got to change his, his version. Yeah, I'm I'm giving him the version number now. Yeah. What is that blurry sound? Going I think it's coming from uh, from Mark's. Which Mark? Um, Mark Thorner. Really? Oh, oh I got. Because I see it light up when you. There, yeah, it just happened again. I saw it light up on your. Yeah. Yeah. Reminds me of R2-D2. I think maybe R2-D2 is in the room with him. Mark, why don't you hang up and call us right back, okay? I just had my mic on mute. Oh. Huh. That's odd, but mm. you're the one that was lighting up in blue. See, there it is again. Another one. Oh, well. It's not like that. Some yeah, sort of harmonic. It's, it's not that annoying. So, Rebecca, what do you do for a living? I'm unemployed right now. I'm looking for work. Really? Well, so am I. Yeah. <laughs> uh... As are uh, many. Patrick, uh, 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 what do you do for a living, Patrick? Uh, I'm unemployed and I freelance. Uh huh. I see. Well, that's good. Okay. At least you got something. Uh, Mark, in the what do you? Patrick, Patrick, what do you freelance with or do? Uh, with graphic design. Yeah. I, I wish it were mercenary or assassin, but uh, <laughs> it's graphic design. So. Hey, you know, you, you work Photoshop. There's. Oh. Yeah. One. Yeah. How many people do we have on right now? Quick. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, ten. Wow. Paul, Paul's uh, trying to call, and I can't take his call. Damn it. All right, I'll tell you, you what. Drop I'll off? drop off. What? I'm on every fucking night anyway. <laughs> I'll drop off. Oh, I don't. If, if, no, no. If there's a spot later, I'll call Okay, okay good. All okay. Bye-bye. Right. Wait a minute. Now Paul hung up. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me call Paul back <laughs> here. Oh, here we go. I haven't heard from Paul in forever, have huh? I? Is that no, Paul he was, he was the same Paul. Hello, Paul. How are you? Uh, hey, Alex. I'm driving, so if it doesn't sound good, I will call back Monday, man. No, all you, right? you, so you, I'll you, just go back to listening. You sound fine. We had somebody we just had to dump because uh, uh, who dumped out so you could get on, so we could hear from you. Uh, 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 we haven't heard from you in a couple of weeks. I ended up getting hurt, man. <laughs> Again, every time I uh, when we were at uh, Sirius XM, you got hurt. I uh, yeah, well, that was a medical thing. This was a stupid thing. I was doing some fence work at the house, and I cut the side of my foot real bad, and uh, I ended up in uh, uh, emergency for about three. You know, well, hospital overall three days. Yeah. And uh, you know, I spent the next few days, uh, you know, the next couple of weeks at home recovering, and I'm finally healed up i had to be stitched it healed up and i'm back and walking now so i'm back to you know uh working and driving so we're right back where we started uh that's why i was pretty much just sitting at home sulking and not you know <laughs> i just i get depressed when I, I can't work you know what i mean it's just you know how it is well but you, you know you could call us you know i you know what i didn't even I, you know, people people think I'm, I'm like, I have people who call me that, that talk to me every day, like my drivers that drive for me. Yeah. And I wouldn't call them. I wouldn't call them. I would just dispatch them over, over to the, the internet. And I would not, I wouldn't call them. And then I just get, I don't know what it is, man. When I, I'm not working. Yeah. I just become very miserable. I don't know what it is. I, my wife says I'm, I'm addicted to work. I don't know what. Yeah. You know, it is what it is. So I, I, I. Yeah, I'm back now, and uh, I'm, I'm going to be pr pretty much, uh, you know, like I said, I, I I miss you guys, so I'm back to listening. So, yeah. So, um, I'm so, glad I'm back here again. So, so has there been anyway, anything that's been bothering you that you wanted to particularly talk about? I know. I just called to tell you this, and then just, you know, when I catch up on what you guys have been talking about, then I can contribute. Right now, there's really not that much. I mean, unless you guys want to go political and start talking about why the heck are we bombing uh, in Iraq again, but uh, yeah. I don't want to even go there right now. You know. Okay. Uh, I enjoyed. I enjoyed the conversation. I, I learned something from you today about the Vitaphone thing uh, that I did not know. You know, and uh, I, I love the idea. Every time you talk about sound films, man, you know, you know way too much that uh, you know. Uh, I miss not hearing in the yeah. daytime, especially. So, Rob, are you still there? 
That's yes, I'm here. How come we're getting like eye. what? What is that that we've got? We got a blurry. That's picture? my cat. Oh, 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 that's your cat. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, now I see it. Is that just a photograph of your cat, or is that? No, actually... that's her live on the floor. Ooh. Oh, and you just put the camera down on her eye. No, that's her whole no, body no. right there. Like oh, that's her whole body. Oh, there we go. I'm yeah. seeing now. There's not enough light on her. Ooh. I see. Okay, yeah, there we okay, go. There, there, there we go. Yeah. You, you got to remember, folks, this is, in fact, video night, so that if people want to do a show and tell of any sort, they can do it. That's his cat, who's been fed way too much food. Nah, it's just the fur. It's just the fur? Yeah. And it's a, it's, a ra- it's, it's, a, it's a rag doll, right? Yeah. Yeah. And she's she's I think she's a reincarnated radio person because she spends more time in the studio than I do. Oh really? Is she oh, she's she like, always in here. She loves the studio? Loves it. You know Maybe why? It's Lynn Samuels. It, you know, it could be oh, do you leave your <laughs> reincarnate. Do you leave did you leave she your do you leave your uh, your your studio equipment on? No. Really? Um, yeah, no, I don't leave it on. The computer stays on, but the equipment else else goes off. Yeah, because, it, like, for instance, this room in here that I'm in, uh, I have to turn the air conditioning on even when it's not a humid day because it gets so hot from the all the equipment that I have in here. And it's central air in here, so. Yeah, yeah there, there she is. Hello, kitty. Hello. Hello. Yeah. I, uh, she loves it in here. Hey, Rebecca, See? show him your favorite. See, now what you should do is go get your I dog, get your dog, <laughs> Tony, and we'll have the dog see the cat. And then he can bark at the cat. <laughs> I don't she can bark at the cat. Right what? Now, I don't want it. Right now, this is like my time now. She's sleeping. Girl. Oh, there she goes. Stretch a kitty. I love it when cats stretch. Oh. That you know that's isometric exercises they do. I'm gonna stretch you right out. That's it, it, years ago. Okay, I I don't know where I pick up these stories. Okay, but you can. Any, anybody here remember Charles Atlas? Sure. Was he a weightlifter? He, uh, said, he was strongest man in the world. It said the strongest man in the world. He wasn't really the strongest man in the world, but they well, said he nobody was. kicked dirt on the beach uh, into his eye. He, but he had the comic where the kid goes yeah. and uh, he, he gets kicked, sand kicked in his sand face, kick, yeah. and bully of the beach, you know. And then uh, he goes out and he uh, he gets the Charles Atlas uh, uh, dynamic tension. It was called uh, th- book, and uh, all of a sudden, next he's kicking sand in the bully's face, right? And with a girl hanging onto him going, you're my hero. Everybody remembers that, right? Well, Charles Atlas actually was this Italian guy who went, who was actually a pretty weak, kind of skinny guy. And he went to the zoo one day and he wondered how this lion he saw, or tiger or whatever, was so muscular and yet he was in an in confined area. So he went out to the zoo every day and watched the tiger. And he noticed what the tiger was doing. And he would do these things like your cat was just doing, where they do that forward stretch and so on. And he he learned that if he did the same thing, he gained muscularness, muscularity. And he called it dynamic tension. Later on, they called it isometric exercises. But it it really is, and it's how I learned to exercise, if you can believe that I ever learned to exercise is that you don't necessarily have to lift weights. It's not so much the lifting of the weights, but the slowness of doing it, the tension you put on your 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 arms when you're doing it. So it isn't like going, uh, 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 that's going to gain you uh, strength. It's bringing them up very slowly and then letting them down very slowly and creating a tension, and that can create musculature. So... You learn that when you uh, play football, uh, that when when you start weight training for football, that they call that uh, uh, stress training. Uh, I don't know if that's a similar, but no, what you I, do is you, you start with light weights. Stress training you, is also known as marriage. Alex <laughs> 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 uh, sounds unhappy. Huh? He sounds unhappy. He's happy as time as that night when he's on the radio. Yeah, yeah, because then I don't have to hang out with my wife. <laughs> I knew he was going to say God, I hope she's not around. <laughs> I hope she doesn't listen to the rerun. Huh? Or she, I hope she doesn't listen she to the rerun. She listens to every show we do like twice. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I'll bet Phil listens to the shows when we're through doing them. Don't you, Phil? Yeah, because I can't hear myself on the uh, with yeah. the uh, recorder that I have. Yeah. 
I, I can only hear the incoming conversation. Yeah. And so, so I have no idea what the mic levels are like. So what's your critique of yourself? Uh, I, I need help. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I bought a uh, toy off of uh, eBay the other day. It'll be here next week. Yeah. It's the exact same board that Rob has. Uh, yeah, the a, same one. What, yeah, what is a that? Behringer 2440 or something. How much? Are you the 24? Mine is the... No, oh, it's a 4240 or... Mine is 2222. Like, here they sounds are. Like my my dick's bigger than too. your dick. No, 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 no. no. I just... I, I, like, I like it to sound right. You know, I've got uh, the worst microphone and the worst board in the network. Yeah, you know. I'll, I'll look at eBay and see what the hell it is. Oh, it's a, uh, four, a 2442. Okay, so I have the 2222. Uh, this one might be a little newer. Yep. I have a 12, but I'm not talking about my board. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> He's talking about how many teeth he has left. Yeah, that, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Phil. Put that on your transistor radio. Yeah, put that on your transistor radio. And shove it where you're now remember, the there's ladies present now. It's okay. It doesn't phase me. And, no, I'm sure. I'm sure <laughs> Re if Rebecca's hung out with Dan, she's put up with worse. <laughs> <laughs> Which worse happens to be Dan. Hey, David, you haven't said anything yet. Yes, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> How are you this evening, David, my friend? I am uh, I am high, two Vicodin so far, and two beers. Now, is it getting to the point where you're taking the Vicodin for the pain, or you're taking it no, one, I, one, I, one for I, the pain and one for you? No, I take it for pain. Yeah. To, 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 today it's not that bad. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, a, so, so. it's a two Vicodin day. Yes. The, how many does your doctor say you can take a day before it would be dangerous? Four. Four? Mm. Don't take more than four a day. Oh, I won't. Hey, you know I what promise. The, you know what the, uh, is it good to do it with the beer? Uh, what, yeah, it, no, you, it's you know. not. <laughs> <laughs> you, no, you're not supposed to do it with the beer, but it makes it more fun, doesn't it? Absolutely. It, it makes great fun. Be happy. It, it makes you happy. You know, the thing yeah. is, I have here Tylenol. Because my doctor told me not to take ibuprofen because I have uh, uh, one of my, my I have a, a sluggish kidney or something. And he said uh, uh, ibuprofen could hurt your kidneys. But ibuprofen really works, so screw my doctor. And I've, I, have to, I got two kidneys. You know, if I lose one, I got one left, you know, and I'm I'm sure if I lose both, one of you guys will give me your kidney, right? How many here would give me a kidney? How many here? I'll donate. Tony would give me a kidney. I have to keep you alive. Huh? Why? Is and then, and then the one that he would take out, he'd feed. <laughs> the, the kidney they'd remove, they'd uh, simply give to you and you'd feed it to your dog. But anyway, uh, but Tylenol... You don't think of as being very dangerous, but you know if you take eight of these in one day, you that could get like liver bit, problems. Um, really? I, I don't think it's liver; I think it's kidney. It oh. could blow out your kidneys. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so, but, but uh, they, they, he said, take Tylenol. Don't take ibuprofen because that that works on the kidneys. But I can't stop taking the ibuprofen. So one of these days, you'll hear that I'll be off tomorrow. They're removing a kidney. I use old-fashioned Bayer aspirin. Well, you know something about aspirin. I mean, if aspirin were invented today, yeah. to begin with, it would cost fifty dollars a bottle, <laughs> and and it's, it would it would true. be under very strict reg, you know, very strict rules because it would cost more. It is an amazing wonder drug. Do you, do you hear yeah. the latest that it may huh. cure uh, colon cancer or prevent colon cancer? Yeah. Bayer? Y yes. Aspirin. I should, yeah. Oh, aspirin. Yeah. It's you say fifty dollars a bottle, and if you go to the hospital and they give you one, it's fifty dollars a pill. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Alex, is it thin? Exactly. Put it up your butt, huh? Does the aspirin thin the blood like they say? Yeah, but it thins blood, but it also does a lot of other things. I mean, uh, this whole thing about that it they, I think it was a uh, somebody like Lancet or whatever in Europe came out with a study that said that they found that it uh, helped prevent colon cancer. So, you know, I mean, this, this is a drug that is maybe the strongest drug we have, and it's, it's, it's not regulated at all. But it would be today. Definitely would be today. But, uh, uh, Alex. Yes. 
if I may, uh, the uh, ibuprofen thing, when I had, remember that surgery I had? Yeah. They were giving me, uh, I had to take one pill that was 600 milligrams every six hours when I was, when I came out of surgery in order to control the swelling, in order to, you know, because of where well, I had the ibuprofen, surgery. I, I don't, ibuprofen stops swelling. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, and I had to take that much um, in order to, because you know where I had the surgery was down below, so I needed to, to keep the swelling down in order to be able to go to the bathroom, and, and that's what they made me take, which I, uh, now you're telling me that, wait, wait, the ones you buy over the counter are 200 milligrams, right? Well, I use the 800s, which are the ones my, my girlfriend gets. Okay. And I can oh, I can imagine it's blowing out my kidney. I just I can imagine it. Oh boy! Now you got me freaking out because I was taking so much for about six months, you know, well, no, three might, months straight. Might not even hurt you. You don't know. You have no yeah. idea. Uh, but yeah. uh, you know, but uh, you know, we're talking about we're like we're such pussies. You know, we're talking about Tylenol and ibuprofen, and our boy David here is on Vicodin. That sounds uh, listen, I was going to tell yeah. Dave everything tastes better with beer, don't it? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know something? Can I can I be perfectly frank or perfectly Alex? Alex. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've never liked beer. Neither do I. Why not? See, David just Dave just it's looked beer, at me. Man. David just looked at me and went like. Is he from outer oh, space? You, you, the only beer I can stomach is something like Guinness. Uh, you know the. It's not beer. Yeah. It's a brown water. Oh, yeah. I never, oh. I, I never, I never liked beer that much. Uh, uh, Dan. Well, I used to not like beer, and I really don't like beer that much. But uh, there was a time when I was, uh, I think I was nineteen, and. I got really, really drunk on like cheapo wine, mm -hmm. and um, I don't know what it was. It was like Wild Irish Rose, Mad Dog, that crap. Yeah. And too bad Rebecca left, but uh, you know she'd like to hear the story. But uh, anyway, um, her sofa's so, still shot. So yeah, so my, so my, um, I got really drunk. I almost died of alcohol poisoning actually that night. Really. So my dad, as punishment to me, yeah. he says, you will only drink beer for like a month. And I hated beer at the time. And I did get to the point where I liked beer somewhat, but I still prefer like a mixed drink. But I hardly ever drink anymore at all. I'd rather smoke well, weed. Well, you want me to even That's take it a step further? <laughs> I really don't like, I don't drink booze at all. I don't drink alcohol. Yeah, same ne here. Never have, really. Then I should go put mine away, right? Uh, what? Me no, either. no. I mean, <laughs> oh, hey, I, I, I don't drink, I, drink all you want. Drinks. But, but I was, I was smoke. over at her place earlier. She offered me, I think, the vodka. I went for the Coca Cola. Well, she was so. trying to get you drunk so she could have her way with you. Yeah, I think she was, but don't do yeah. That. <laughs> Give away my secret. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, no, I, I, uh, I never liked alcohol. Never, beer. I'll tell you when I, one time I liked beer. It was a really hot day. Enough said. And somebody gave me yeah. a beer and I said, boy, that really takes care of the heat. You know? What beer? Uh, what, huh? what kind of beer? I don't know. It was some, some rat piss. You, you ever go fishing, you ever go fishing out in the sound, uh, Alex at all with a, a nice cooler full of beer? No. Ice cold beer, you know. That. Jews, first of Jews, all, you've said Jews you, don't fish. Yeah, for, yeah, for, <laughs> <laughs> the first thing you said that was wrong is no. fish. Okay, and uh, you know, uh, but I, I, but but alcohol, I just never could get used to the taste of. And then, if I did drink it, I didn't like the kind of buzz it gave me. You know, I didn't like the high. That's why when pot came along, I was so happy because it was a finally something I could do to get high. Uh, but everybody, everybody used to think I was an alcoholic because I would go to a party and they say, "And what will you have?" And I said, "Do you have uh, soda? Do you have a Coke?" Yeah. And they think that I was like an alcoholic because if you don't drink, you got to be an alcoholic. Right. <laughs> a good glass of wine, you know, especially living out in California, yeah. uh, there are so many fantastic wineries. And once you develop a palate uh, for, for wine and you can tell the difference, it's, it's okay. But it's like one or two glasses max. 
you know. Uh, I don't drink it. wine either. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's it's really strange. I'm the most non-alcoholic person you will ever uh, want to meet or not want to meet. I mean, <laughs> uh, what was it uh, Sinatra said once? Uh, I, I don't trust people who don't drink because when they get up in the morning, that's uh, the best they're going to feel all day. <laughs> uh, my father, my fa- I, I always tell that story about my father, you know, s- saying, son, you're uh, you're 21 now. Uh, we were up at Calneva Lodge. Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., and Dean Martin were in a side room all partying. We could see them because my father was working with the band. And I remember it like it was yesterday. And he said uh, said to me, he said, um, before my, your father goes to his just reward, would you do something with me and have a drink since you're now 21? And I said, okay, but I don't drink. And he said, well, why don't you try it with me? I said, okay. He said, what do you have? And I said, I, yeah, I don't know. What should I have? He says, I'll order for you. And he says to the bartender, bartender, Jack Daniels on the rocks. Uh, so he, 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 the, the, the nectar guy, of the gods, the guy, huh? Nectar of the gods is what he used to call it. Uh huh. And, and Sinatra? It, yeah. And he, and he, uh, I took a sip of the thing and I went, oh my fucking God, this is terrible. <laughs> and my father looks back at me and says, and you think I've been having fun all these years. <laughs> hey, uh, Alex. Yeah. I have a special news bulletin from the Gabnet Newsroom. Wait a minute. Oh, boy. From, do you have it from it's the from theme music? I don't have my thing up, but uh, listen to this. This week's death of former White House Press Secretary oh, James yes. Brady, yes. who survived a gunshot wound to the head in 1981's assassination attempt on Ronald Reagan, has been ruled a homicide by a medical examiner. In the yeah, of yeah. Police I, I saw that on the news tonight, and I think the re- thinking is is that they may feel that he eventually died of his wounds. Oh, that's a you wow. know. I mean, it, 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 it was twenty years. It's what twenty years 33 later. Thirty-three years. Thirty-three years later. Yeah. Weren't they yeah. talking about paroling? Uh, what was his name? Hinkley. Oh, or? he goes home now for twenty days at a time. He's allowed oh. to go home uh, because he was in a mental hospital. He wasn't in a prison. Yeah, so, so they, the, can they try him again now for as murder? Soon as, they, as soon as they cure him, they can try him again. Well, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think... I, 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 well, of course, the crime of murder never has an expiration date. Mm-hmm. So technically they could. But I, I, I had a funny feeling when he died. I said, I wonder if he died as a result of just years later, the wound taking its course. Well, yeah. Wasn't the fact that he was seventy nine and uh, he's he, 73. No, he's seventy three? No, he's seventy seventy three. Yeah. Uh, now, Alex, you know I'm lefty. I I I I'm, I'm, I own guns, but um, for gun regulation, the only thing I could say meant to this is, how can they say thirty some odd years later the gun wound actually killed him? I mean, he lived for you know what I mean. He lived for that long. That just doesn't make sense, does it? Uh, um, that is strange. Well, I mean, it's, you can still rule it a homicide. I mean, if, if you feel that what killed him had something to do with the the wound he had uh, gotten in that uh-huh. incident, then you could say it was a homicide, technically. Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, you know, you, have a, you get in a bad accident, you survive it, you come out of surgery, you die 30 years later. You know, is that like... Homicide too. I'm, I'm just. That's just. You know. It's just kind of weird. But yeah, we'll see where it goes. Yeah, but it, 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 it's an interesting. Uh, it's an interesting story. You know. Yeah, I think uh, legally it might be interesting. Maybe Josh would like to talk about that on his show tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> already you're calling it his show. I see. Okay. Well, whatever it is. <laughs> whatever it is. No, <laughs> we like to think that we're eavesdropping on their conversation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now back to liquor, Phil. You ever have this uh, this thing called Dubonnet? Yes. Matter of fact, that's one of my favorite drinks. Join uh, the oh, I, join. Uh, I drink a uh, Dubonnet cocktail, which is one third red Dubonnet and two thirds beef eater gin, uh, in a martini glass up. Yeah, I know exactly what it is, man. One of my favorite drinks too. I mean, I I I drink Dubonnet as an aperif, you know, for like before a meal. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I think it just makes the meal taste so much better. I think it kills yeah. it up. 
<laughs> enough taste well, buds. It's definitely an acquired taste. Uh, when I first tried it, uh, it tasted like gasoline. But uh, now I've been drinking it uh, probably as a cocktail of choice uh, before dinner at a restaurant and uh, for the last 30 years. And uh, that's been uh, my, my drink of choice. You, uh, you do the, the white or the red? Just uh, red, red Dubonnet. It's one-third yeah. one third Dubonnet, two-thirds beef eater. Um, uh, and it's, uh, then it's on an up glass with a lemon twist. You thought it tasted like gas. I, I, the first time I ever tried it, um, I was uh, a busboy at a restaurant in upper, upper side Manhattan, Upper West Side called Argo. And mm -hmm. um, this old guy was drinking it, and we ran out, so they sent me to the liquor store to get it. So when I got it, I opened it. The boss took off. I poured a little bit for myself. I tried it. I, I liked it from that day, man. I made it's it a point gin. to have some. It's the gin that gives it the gasoline, uh, uh, you know, power. Yeah, uh, yeah, but I also like gin, so maybe that's why. Okay, I'll tell you. I'll tell you one liquor that uh, uh, liqueur. I guess liqueur is a better description of it that I that I used to drink. I used to go to this island called Ibiza. Now forget it. Don't go there anymore. Justin Bieber hangs out there now. But these were the days. <laughs> when a bunch of expats used to hang out there in the 70s. And every time I've gone to Ibiza, I get this. You're sitting out on the beach, and it's a warm, hot beach, and they have this drink called hierbas, which simply means herbs in Spanish. And what it is, it's herbs from the island, and it kind of is almost like an anisette taste, but it just, for some reason, under that hot Mediterranean sun, on the island of Ibiza, it just tastes wonderful. Now, I bought a bottle of it and took it back with me to New York, sat in my living room and drank it, and it didn't taste anything like it tasted when I was sitting there on the beach in Ibiza. Uh, I'll tell you one thing, Alex. If you ever, like, you know, you've been to the Mediterranean, so have I, Greece. When you eat the fruit there and come bring that fruit up here, it seems to change taste also. I don't know how to... You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. uh, mandarin. You can you can eat mandarins picked from the tree in in in, in the uh, uh, in the fields we have in Greece, uh, on my island in Rhodes, mm -hmm. and bring them bring them up here with you and sit down to eat the same mandarin and it tastes like uh, eating hay over here. I, I don't even know how to explain that. How many here? Have, that how many here have ever tried absinthe? Uh, yeah, it tastes like licorice. Right? Uh, no. Oh, is that? It, it's um, very bitter. You have to put, do it through a slotted spoon with sugar. Mm -hmm. oh, um, oh, oh, what, do you know what I'm talking about, Rebecca? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And it, it's you have to have the sugar in the slotted spoon, otherwise, don't drink it straight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's another. There's another French aperitif that uh, I think it has um, a uh, licorice taste, and it sounds similar to that. But uh, but absinthe was it, it, it basically I think to this day it's illegal in the United nope. States. But people, it's now legal. It is technically legal. Yeah, I bought it, is, it here, and I have it too. I have a bottle of Grand Absinthe right in my drawer. Yeah. Oh. And and what does it do to you? Is it LSD like? It gives a nice buzz. You know. Uh, Makes colors look very interesting. Yeah. Yes. Um, but see. it's bitter, technically, which means if you have an upset stomach, you know, you're supposed to for that. Boy, people have done other things. That I'll yeah, uh, you're breaking up on us a little bit. Uh, the uh, uh, I, I've taken it, and it got me mildly high. But it was known in uh, France as the Green Imp. Yep. And, well. and and it, 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 it has also played very largely in literature and film. If Oliver you, if, and Boa, if, well, Total you, Eclipse, if, he, he if, drank that in the movie. Who? Uh, Total Eclipse, Arthur Rimbaud, the poet. Uh, yeah. In the movie, he was known to be drinking that. They put the sugar in the spoon like and they put a drink over it. It's, yeah. Yeah. And I think he wrote some of his work. I well, what you do is you put, the, you put the drink in there, but then you put the sugar on a slotted spoon and then you pour hot water over the... Uh, sugar it's it it's all ritual you could probably just put sugar water in there and do the same thing but it's all ritual and then you uh then you drink the absinthe and supposedly it gives you quite a nice little uh little high 
And and if you ever went to see the movie uh, Dracula, Cop Coppola's Dracula, yeah. Absinthe was a very big component of that film. And in uh, Moulin Rouge, uh, the, the, the the recent version with Nicole Kidman and so on, there was a whole, I think, thing in there of, uh, of an absinthe uh, green imp um, uh, hallucination. Uh, it, 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 it's a very famous... It, Played famously in uh, in literature and everything. Always, you always see it showing up in old literature. Um, yeah. And I remember, remember there was a place in New Orleans called the Old Absinthe House. Uh, so, I was thinking of a drink called Calvados uh, when uh, when you said uh, uh, this absinthe, which I'm not familiar with, but yeah. uh, Calvados is an apple. Uh, French apple liqueur that is extremely liqueur, yeah. Why is it whenever uh, they make strong. liqueurs out of anything, they always wind up tasting like licorice? I don't well, understand that. This one's apple, but it's it tastes like well, uh, fire water. Yerbas, mm -hmm. which is on Ibiza, uh, it comes from a plant that grows in Ibiza, and it's just turned into a liqueur because I think you can take any plant and turn it into a liqueur. So it's the liqueur of that island. But as I say, you take a bottle of home with you, and it doesn't. It just tastes the same. Just it's to, like when you buy Limoni it, on it, uh, Capri. It, it has a lot to do with the atmosphere, the heat, the, 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 you know, the, the sun uh, of the Mediterranean, which is, uh, if I had anywhere to live, I would be the Mediterranean. Not the Gazan side, but <laughs> <laughs> elsewhere. Uh, in Arabos. The, uh, Arabos. The, the water is so blue, and, uh, especially... Um, uh, you know, and, and the uh, side of the Mediterranean, like near Sardinia, yeah. uh, and 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 even uh, in Italy, uh, Capri, you, you look at the water; it's it's just it's just blue. And, and, and at the right time of the year, it's just the right temperature too. Just mm -hmm. the right temperature. Uh, uh, so, Rob, I'm, yeah. I want to call upon you for something. Mm -hmm. You did your little game show tonight. Yeah. How did it, it sound? Like it went okay. Yeah, tough questions tonight. Yeah, they were really tough questions. Was David was the winner. Oh, for, good for you, David. What did you win? Oh, did you get the brand new car? Yes, new Bentley. Yeah, we're offering. <laughs> new, uh, okay, anything you want. Once the company makes money, it's an IOU. You realize. So if the company the, ever um... makes money, we'll get you that Bentley. Did oh, you hear the you. audio clue? Or a picture of the, it. The audio clue. Yeah. Okay. Well, give me the audio clue. I didn't... <laughs> Oh, man, I closed my, uh, give me a second. You, you know that funny sound I think is coming from you, Rob, oddly enough. That sound? Whenever she he talks. It's when I talk, but it, um, it's, how about now? No, no, now it's fine. Okay. Okay. Well, let's see here. Okay, so you have a sound for us. Yeah. And this is a sound clue, and we're supposed to figure out who this is? Yeah, this was the one that David won on. Oh, okay. Oh, fuck, you. fuck you back! Oh, boy. Oh. You know what that's from? No. Fuck you. Fuck, yeah, fuck you. you. Fuck you back! It's from a movie. Uh, no. Yeah. I have no idea. That's Albert Finney. Yeah. And Julia Roberts. In, um... I'm going to lower my mic here. What's going on? Is that you? With that weird sound? Yeah. I don't know. Who just accidentally left us? Oh, Rebecca left us. Oh, oh, oh no, Rebecca's there. still there. Rebecca's here. Huh. Hmm. Yeah, That's this. from uh, Aaron Brockovich. It is from Aaron Brockovich? Aaron Let me Brockovich. hear it again. Hear it again? Yeah. Fuck you. Fuck you back! Well, it doesn't even sound like her. It doesn't sound like Julia Roberts. No. She wouldn't be acting if it did. Right. <laughs> who, who did we lose, by the way? I don't know. Paul. Huh? Oh, Paul. Yeah, we lost Paul. Paul. That's who we lost. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Uh, you have, you have a, 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 why, why don't you try one of your questions? Do you have any of your questions left that you didn't do tonight? Uh, I got a bunch. Oh, okay. Pick a category. You got actors and actresses, political figures, rock music, and sports stars. I'll take... Uh, well, I'm not taking sports stars. Uh, political. Give them political. Political? Yeah. Okay, give me political. Uh, the others are too easy for you. All right. Okay, I was born in 1919. 
I became a regionally successful boxer in high school, then went directly to law school in 1937 at the University of Alabama School of Law in Tuscaloosa. You know why I went to Tuscaloosa? Because the elephants are there in the Tuscaloosa. <laughs> Tuscaloosa. He went to Tus uh, Alabama boxer. Harry Reid. No, no. Number three. In 1938, at age 19, I contributed to my grandfather's successful campaign for probate judge. Not Strom Thurmond. Truman? <laughs> Not Strom. Is it Harry Truman? No. Not Strom Thurmond. No. Number four, in 1952, I became known as the Fighting Little Judge, a nod to my past boxing association. God, I have no idea who you're talking about. Stumping us. It's me. Yeah, I I don't know. Number five in 1958, I ran for the demo in the Democratic primary for governor, but failed. Fuck you, Rob. Governor of what? <laughs> <laughs> governor of where? Is it Wapner? <laughs> <laughs> we will have no <laughs> racial epithets on this program. Clue number six. In the 1962 Democratic primary, yeah. I finished first in the primary ahead of State Senator Ryan D. Graffenfried. D. Gaffenfried? Senior. That's because nobody 30, could spell the guy's name. Taking 35% of the vote in uh, the runoff, I won the nomination with 55% of the vote. Really? That's uh, interesting. Uh, We're going to be down to seven, clue number 20 before we get this. I ran for president in the 1968 election as the American Independent Party candidate with Chris LeMay as my candidate for vice president. Uh, uh, George Wallace? Bingo, George ah, Wallace. I got it. Oh, boy. Oh, I yeah. After far. about 87 <laughs> clues, you got it. <laughs> got to get it on the first clue to win oh, the car. Yeah. Okay, let's try, oh, let's try yeah. movie people. Go ahead, movie people. You get the steak knives if you go. Okay, past the, the steak second. knives. That's okay. Would you say actors and actresses? Actors and actresses, yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> I was born in North Carolina in 1926. I was a shy student, but once I found a way to make my peers laugh, I began to come out of my shell and come into my own. Uh, oh, gee, I know this one. Marlon Brando? Nope. Nope. Uh, but, uh, Except um, for the birth date, it's, it could have been Robin Williams. What year was he born again? <laughs> born in uh, 26. 26. So that would make him how old? 85 or 86. 86. If he's still alive. 88. Huh? Um, number three, I attended the University of North Carolina and graduated with a Bachelor's of Music degree in 1949. Keep going. <laughs> After graduation, I taught music and drama for a few years at Goldsboro High School. Keep going. Yeah, keep going. My I early career... These are big clues. My early career was as a monologist delivering long stories which are told from the point of view of a rural backwoodsman. Oh. Andy Griffith? Bingo! No. Really? I got it again! Hey. Wow. Oh, God, now you, yeah. have two, now you have two cigarette holders. <laughs> There's we're, left hand and his right. We're, we're, <laughs> okay, let's try good one more game. here. He's good at this game. Which uh, category? I mean, he's rock good. He's got to get to, like, clue number music. 20 before he gets rock the music. answer. Yeah. Oops, that ain't rock music. George H.W. Bush. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number one, we formed in 1969 in Chicago. Chicago? Chicago. No. <laughs> okay. Too obvious. Number two, we have recorded over 15 albums. We have recorded over 15 albums, and they, uh, they formed in Chicago. Yeah, in 69. Oh, man, I, uh. Number three, our music has been described as the down and dirty, but, it's, but equally... Bob Seger? Sorry? Bob Seger? No. 
but equally eclectic Parliament Funkadelic. Oh, uh, that's... Uh, has always preached clean, uplifting messages. That's, uh, what's his name? Uh, Reverend Billy uh, Graham. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, God. What's Reverend it? Horton Heat. No, I know. Stop it. You give me, you see, when you do that, you give me brain farts for crying out loud. <laughs> Uh, I know who you're talking about, and that's the guy who did the thing. The yeah, thing? Clue uh, <laughs> 30. Salmon and the 30, flam. You'll get it. What? The yeah. flam. Um, between our first and our fifth albums, only one band, mem- band member stayed the same. Why? He killed all the rest of them? Guess so. Or they were eaten by, uh, by uh, 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 Tony's dog. <laughs> that's not flying a family stone, is it? No. I didn't think they Number were five, our sixth album released yielded our only number one pop hit. Oh, God. You drive me nuts <laughs> with this stuff. Number six, I don't, during... I don't like your fucking game show. <laughs> <laughs> he has great clues. During our 1978 national tour, Doug Henning, the magician, designed oh, our special so... effects. Oh, Doug Henning. Doug Henning, yeah. The, the world is wonderful with magic. Remember him? Yeah. I hated him. <laughs> uh, but he, I thought that would be the giveaway clue. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Really um, in 1978, we were in a movie whose title shares the same name as a Beatles album. Yellow Submarine? 78. Revolver? Uh, revolver? Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, shares with a Beatles. Sarge, are you talking about Sarge Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band? That's the movie, yep. Yeah. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, I know the guy who wrote that movie. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. So, uh, uh, so you're talking about what's his name? I know the name? Bee Gees were in it. Yeah. Um, wait, a minute, wait, wait a minute. Fire? You're, That's right. What? Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh, hmm. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Okay. No, I know a guy who... Um, he, all his life was, you know, he's a writer and uh, writing, trying to write movies and stuff. And finally gets a job. And the job he gets is writing the screenplay to Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Now, it doesn't take much to write that movie because it pretty much writes itself, right? Mm-hmm. But he figures, I finally did. I finally am in the big time because, you know, this guy Stigwood was producing the movie and all these people are in it. And look, we have a baby on TV tonight, folks. Hold the baby up. Don't get him too close to Tony's oh. dog. Tony oh. will eat the baby. Dog will eat the baby. <laughs> the dingo <laughs> ate my baby. The dingo. And how old is that baby? He is a month old. He's my grandson. Oh, your grandson. My grandson. Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> I know, I know. So it, essentially, this is kind of interesting. That came out of somebody who came out of you. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that how they get babies? It's, it's real zen, yeah. you know. That's how babies are made. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. It's not uh, the but, and, Anyway, so he writes this movie, and it is one of the biggest failures in the history of Hollywood. Oh. And he never gets another job again. Uh. For one month. And, and, and he goes into Great Depression. <laughs> this is going to kill you. He goes into Great Depression. <laughs> Whoa. What the hell? Oh, that was they racing. Down. It was the onions. They're racing down the street in front of your house. Yeah, where are the cops now? They're speeding. Yeah, where is it? It's almost midnight for crying it out. Sounded like a motorcycle. I mean, live on a main road. I can't stand it. I need the rain either, either that or the dog just farted. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> he goes nuts, goes to a shrink, who decides that what he needs to do is he needs to give him a roommate. Who is also crazy? Oh my God! Right, and then they will live together, and he will be the therapist for the two of them at the same time. And by living with each other, they'll be able to help each other out. His roommate is Rod Steiger. Oh, the actor! Oh, no. oh. Sounds like. Can that you think Jack of a cra- of, of a uh, crazier who, person he, to put you in the same room management. with? He was in on the waterfront, I think. Yeah. Was he? No, yeah, he was on on the waterfront. Yeah, I love that movie. But, uh, anyways, <laughs> but but he never wrote another movie again. Shit. They never would hire him. 
What did you do? I did Sergeant Pepper's Lonely. Get out of here. <laughs> don't don't Rod even. Tiger didn't hire him either. Huh? Don't even talk to yeah. us. We might catch whatever failure you have. You know, loser breath. Well, yeah. You say you wait all your life for a for a major uh, accomplishment, and you know. Sounds like a good plot to a movie in and of itself. Mike Beaumont, you've been quiet tonight. No, I'm just just listening and going with the flow here. Yeah. Anything you want to? Anything you want to talk about? Anything in the news that's pissing you off? Uh, no, I I kind of caught wind of that uh, Brady thing. I I was kind of surprised that it was ruled homicide as well. Somebody else mentioned that earlier. Um, I read a little bit about it, and uh, I don't think it's 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 going to be going anywhere. Well, if they did an uh, autopsy and they found that what killed him was not say cancer or anything else, but that. Uh, it was as a result 33 years later of whatever wound he had uh, acquired at the time. Did then he I have guess, any shrapnel in him? That, I, I would imagine he probably did. You know, you got to remember, he got hit in the head. He got shot in the head. Yeah. Um, uh, he took the bullet for Reagan. Yeah. Um, Reagan didn't even know he was hit. Or as my friend Will Durst used to say, I can't trust a guy to be president who doesn't have a central nervous system. <laughs> um, didn't didn't uh, Reagan get hit in the lung? He got. Where did he get hit? Was it yeah, in the arm? Yeah, yeah, under the arm. Under it the arm. It was like really close to the heart. Actually, I didn't know until later he was. You know what? I was, there was this documentary I've been watching uh, that PBS did on on John Kennedy and JFK. Did anybody see this thing? No, it's good. And I didn't realize stuff about about Kennedy, uh, up, up, among other baby's things. Crying. Oh, the baby's crying now. This is a really homey show tonight. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Chats, maybe babies. we can get maybe we can get uh, David to do a Czechoslovakian folk dance for us, and uh. it will be really homey. Um, anyway, I didn't realize Kennedy was as sick as he was. I mean, from birth. Uh, I mean, he had uh, a, a, he had uh, scarlet fever when he was a baby. Uh, he always grew up weak and, and weakly and, and kind of a, a weakly kid. And then then later on, he got the bad back, and then he got Addison's disease. And I mean, they had he he was in and out of the hospital while he was senator, and almost died while he was in the hospital because Addison's disease cuts down on your immune system. So when he had his back operated on, it got infected, and there was nothing there to fight the infection. I mean that when he was president, I mean he was. Uh, in fact, I interviewed a woman named Blaze Starr who was a stripper. And she had been brought to uh, this uh, senator's office, uh, John Kennedy, by a, a southern... Uh, who was the guy in the South that was her boyfriend? Um, that was the Paul Newman movie. Right? The Paul Newman movie, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, he, he brought uh, Blaze Star by to fuck John Kennedy because John Kennedy would fuck anything that moved. <laughs> that was another one of his little peccadillo talents. And she said... We had to do it in a closet, standing up, because he couldn't do it lying down because of his back. Wow. And they were talking about his back being so bad, there was a point in the Senate where he could not walk on the marble floors in the Senate oh because it would hurt his back because the floor was, wasn't cushioned enough. That's yeah. why everybody should have carpet. And here's an ad now for Phil's carpet <laughs> company. <laughs> But I found just the documentary amazing when it brings up how sickly he was, uh, how Jackie knew he fucked around, but just figured, you know, if I love him, I've got to put up with that. Did you, you see know. the movie about them that was uh, that was a seven or eight part thing that was done? Yeah. And yeah. it was her. She went to his father and, you know, Joseph Kennedy and said, look, I'm done. And he said, hang in there. We'll take care of you. You know, we can't have you leave him. We'll take care of you. <laughs> yeah. You know, they kind of kept her in line. Well, I mean, she wanted to leave. Well, it, it, who was it? There was somebody in this uh, in this documentary who was saying that uh, uh, at one point, just before election night or something, he they, he was tired and he was kind of sitting there, and she leaned her head up against him, and they were very loving to each other. 
And he found that interesting because everybody knew how much he was going around, you know, fucking anything that would move. Right. Uh, that there was some something between the two of them. There was a love between the two of them, which was quite endearing, they said, in spite of yeah. what he was doing. As sick as he was, was there anything to that PT-109 story? Uh, was that fabricated? Or? No, not fabricated yeah. at all. So, uh, so he swam all that way uh, yeah. uh, towing a buddy? Yep, yep. I mean, and getting a lot of the other people in the boat to swim with him. It was like a three-mile swim to the island. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, that wasn't fabricated. That, uh, that wasn't fabricated at all. No, that's what I'm asking. You know. And uh, and then the brother, of course, who w they were going to run for president, died in a, a piloting an airplane over the, I think over the uh, the uh, the uh, English uh, Channel. Uh, but it just it, if you get to see this documentary, it's just so many things about Kennedy you just didn't realize. And and you know we talk about Obama and how bad he is, and, and let's face it, he's he sucks. But if you want to hear about a president who sucked in his first year, check out this Kennedy documentary. I mean, he had Bay of Pigs, total, utter failure, right? He had a meeting with Khrushchev in which Khrushchev just read him the riot act and nothing came out of that. I mean, it was one thing after another. And then uh, uh, there was a, uh, they, they were throwing uh, the civil rights thing at him at that point because... You had people uh, busing in uh, um, in the South, and he knew he couldn't go to Congress and kind of fight for civil rights because you had yourself, the Democrats at that time were basically these Dixiecrats. Mm -hmm. In fact, an interesting little piece of information that I got out of this, that the reason that Kennedy didn't think he could get elected was that he, he, didn't, he wanted to court the black vote. But to court the black vote would be hurting would hurt him with the Dixiecrats, right? But on the other hand, he needed that black vote, and the only way he could get it was by doing something that would endear blacks to him. Because guess what blacks were who blacks were going to vote for? Nixon. And why were they going to vote for Nixon? Because they did not like the Democrats. They right. they were still back in the days of thinking of the Republicans as the people who freed the slaves. And the Democrats were these Dixiecrats who kept them from voting and everything else. So it, 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 there was a whole thing with uh, Martin Luther King and how he kind of went around a bunch of people to kind of help him. And then word got out that he had helped him, but somehow it didn't hurt him and helped him with the blacks, but didn't hurt him with the whites. It was very strange. It's a very good documentary because it, it's a lot of talk about stuff that I never knew was going on at the time. But I never thought he was much of a president, and this documentary pretty much bears that out. You know, he also sent the first troops over to Vietnam. Troops, yeah. Yeah. Well, they were they were they were uh, military advisors. It was Eisenhower that sent the first uh, advisors. Oh, oh, and by the way, you know who hated him? Who hated Eisenhower. Kennedy, <laughs> and who the Kennedys hated back? Johnson. Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely, Johnson could not stand him. He called him a little boy blue. Uh, you know, he always felt the only way in which this guy uh, became president was because his father bought the office. Mm -hmm. You know, and it really, really quite a quite a good documentary. You ever wonder if Johnson had anything to do with the assassination? Uh, no, I don't think he had anything to do with the assassination. No, no. I think if you ask Oliver Stone, he might think he did. Well, Oliver Stone's an idiot. <laughs> Hollywood, you know, yeah. It's uh, it, but here, he, here's the thing. Uh, you know, I at first, you know, what I what I did during the whole time that everybody was, you know, uh, talking about the plots and so on. That you know, who did it? Who killed Kennedy? All that kind of crap. And I said, um, why don't you all shut up? Uh, I, I, I'll say I did it, and we can end the argument. You know, uh, but. What happened was, is I took the side that maybe the, the, the most extreme theory of all is that it was a single bullet. You know, that, the, that, he, that it w was a single uh, shooter in that incident. 
And everybody for years used to put me down for that, but nobody's ever proven otherwise. Now, it, uh, wasn't it? It wasn't a mob hit. Now, I think it was a mob hit. Okay, I think it was a mob in conjunction with the CIA because the the mob hated him uh, because he was going after the mob. Bobby Kennedy was going after the mob, and they were in fact the guys who got him elected in the first place. That Chicago vote was as phony as you can go. He only won by about 20,000 votes in Chicago, but that was the vote that put him over the top. And they were uh, all dead. And they were all dead, and it was from Sam Giancana who helped do that. And then all of a sudden, here comes Bobby Kennedy going after the mob. So they hated him, and then the CIA hated him for Bay of Pigs. And they both had an, a, a relationship together because when they came with that plot to kill Castro... Yeah. Uh, and when they came with that plot to kill Castro, they they were the guys who were coming up with, oh, let's uh, poison his cigar and whatever. And the mob was supposed to rub out Castro, and the CIA was supposed to help them. And so they had some kind of a working relationship with each other. So I think it could have been a CIA uh, FBI hit because both sides yeah, had something very strongly against him. Yeah, wasn't there an investigation and a lot of the mob guys who were going to testify all started getting knocked off? Yeah, but I, I think that that, to me, is the best theory, and I think the reason why that has never come to bear over the years uh, is, is because uh, uh, it would be too embarrassing to the Kennedy, Kennedy legacy to say he was knocked off by the CIA and the mob. Uh, but you got to remember, the mob was very important in the uh in the um uh 60 in, in, in the 60 election absolutely yeah what time is it oh i'm running out of time here you know jim tonight is not live jim is uh is pre-recorded he pre-recorded a show a couple of days ago uh with a couple of the callers to gabnet uh and and did a program because he knew he might have to be out of town today to go do some medical things and so we will have a pre-recorded broadcast with, uh, with Jim. And uh, then tomorrow night, uh, in this time slot, <laughs> it'll be... Is it 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock? It'll be 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. Because we, we, th this way we don't have to start to rewind and then cut away from it. They'll start at 9 and go till 11 doing uh, this little uh, Saturday night. I don't even know what we'll call it, but J Dave, you'll be there, won't you, David? Yes, it's called Checkmate. It's called Checkmate? I see. Checkmate. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, and, uh, it, and it's you, and it's Josh, and it's Patrick, and then other people can call, too, if they want to. Yeah. So I hope that they do. Uh, hey, listen, I want to uh, thank everybody for being here tonight. Uh, it's been great of you to join us. Uh, Rob, thank you. He's on the phone right now. Uh, but we'll say goodnight to Rob. We'll say goodnight to Raymond, better known Raymond. as Rebecca. Thank you, Rebecca. Good to uh, see the hi. baby, too. David, always good seeing you. Dan, Mark, 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 Marky Mark. Uh, good Phil, good Phil, hi. thank you for being with hi, us. And hi. Tony, you stuck through the whole show, you little son of a bitch. Hi. Go kiss your dog goodnight for me. Thanks. No, I'm not tired. I'm going to watch TV now. Oh, okay. Me too. Okay. <laughs> Talk to you later. Have a nice Bye. night, Good everybody. Bye-bye. Good night. I'm Alex Bennett. That's it for tonight. Uh, uh, we're uh, going to kind of call quits here. Uh, but as always, as I like to say, uh, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? All righty.